Hey friends, it's Christy here with you on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Would You Be Mine, Scent with Love, and Swan Soiree. So I have stamped out the images that I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I will be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my beavers, and for them I'm going to use E21 E23 and E25. So I recently did a holiday card with these beavers just last week on my own channel, Christy Gets Crafty, and I used a different brown combo. So I wanted to mix things up today and show you a different variation. So that's why I chose these E20s. Starting with that E25 for my shadows and laying those in. For this little beaver, I did it on the left hand side because I like to put the shadows down the back of the body. That way I can keep the face nice and highlighted so you can really see all those adorable features. I'm also going to do a second layer on this beaver. I'm only going to show you on one of them. I did it for both. But you can see that that E21, because it is so much lighter, it really pushes back that E23 and the blend isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. So I'm going to go over that a second time. That's going to do two things. It's going to smooth things out quite a bit, but it's also going to just darken up that saturation and make them so much more rich. So I'm going to do the second beaver, which is going to be a girl beaver for this little scene. She's going to get that little hair bow up above. And I'm going to flip her shadows to be on the right hand side because her face is toward the left. So I'm just going to continue blending in the same order, starting darkest to lightest. That's just the way I prefer to do it, but you can do it either way. And putting a, the lightest shade, that E21, on the lower part of the face and then also down on the belly. And then once I finish up her second layer, I'm going to move on to their tails. I'm going to keep the E25, but I'm going to add in the E27 and the E29. I'll put a good amount of that E29 down at the lower part of the tail where the body is casting a shadow on it. And then I'm going to do almost like a little L shape in each of those little squares to give a bit of texture to that grid pattern on the tail. I'll blend that out with the E27 and fill in with the E25. Now that little bit of extra texture is totally optional. If you'd rather not add that, you certainly don't have to. Um, you could just color it darkest to lightest from the base of the tail toward the top, but I just thought it would be fun to try. Once these tails are finished, I'm actually going to use the same shades for the cat tails. So I'm starting again with that E29 and I'm going to shade two of them over on the left hand side and two on the right as they will go on the card and then blend up with the E27 and the E25. And then for their noses, I just use the darkest two shades, the E29 first and then the E27. Then I'm going to add in some rosy cheeks. I'm going to use RV10 and RV11. I laid in a little bit of that RV11 first and then traced around that with the RV10 to blend that in. And then it wasn't quite dark enough, so I did add in a little RV13 as well. And I'm also going to do every other heart in the little garland that is from Scent with Love. And I'm going to put the shadows down on the bottom right side just to keep everything consistent and then blend toward the top left. I'll do the little hair bow to match using those same three shades. And then I'm going to move on to some reds. I'm going to use R24, R29, and R39. And I'm going to do this big giant heart that these two beavers are kind of gnawing on. I think it would be super cute to do it like a wood grain pattern as well. But I decided I wanted that nice big pop of red in the center of the card. So I decided to just go, maybe it's like a, a candy heart or something like that. 
So I kept it with the same shadows as I did on the garland. So the shadows are down on the bottom right hand side. And then I'm working my way toward the top left with the R29. And then I'll fill in the center with the R24 because it has that nice bright warmth to it that just really makes this combo so beautiful, I think. So once I have that heart filled in, I'm also going to do the rest of the hearts in that little garland. I decided to just stick with the traditional Valentine red and pink for that. And I'm going to do my shadows the same as I did on the pink ones using the R39 first and then blending out with the R29 and then the R24. And I will do the little trio of hearts the same as well. And those I just decided to do all in red. So I'm just going to use the pink as a, a smaller accent. So once I'm done with my reds, I'm going to move on to another brown combo. I didn't want to use the same browns as I used on my beavers. That way they will still continue to stand out as the focal point in this scene that I'm going to be building. So I decided to go with the E50s. They aren't quite as rich as the shades I used on the beavers, but they're still nice and warm, so they work well for wood. So I started down at the bottom of this log with E57 and put a shadow down where that sun wouldn't be hitting, where it's kind of rolled toward the ground. And then I blended up with the E55. Then I'm gonna come in with the E53 and always just making sure to catch the edge of the previous shade. So I'm just going over, not the entire part, but just a little bit of it so that it, I get a nice smooth blend. And then I added a little of that E53 into the cut side. Then I moved on to the E51 for the highlight at the top and added that to the cut side and then just a little E50 on the cut side to finish it off. And then I'm going to switch to some greens for my little grasses on my cattails. I'm using G21, G24, and G28 for those started with the G28 and just put it kind of in the way that the grass is curved away from the sun. And then I'm gonna blend that out with the G24. And I just left a little bit of space on the very tips of each of those little blades for the highlight, which will be with the G21. So I'm just gonna finish those and that is going to complete the coloring. So I'm going to grab a black Sakura jelly roll pen and just go over the eye of the one beaver that has his eye open. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. Next, I'm going to start working on the different elements for my background and they are all created out of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. And I'm going to blend on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink. So the first section that I'm working on is the sky. So I'm using the cloudy stencil to create some nice cloud formations and turning that stencil so that I get different clouds as I go down the panel. I'm only going to have a little bit of the sky showing, so it didn't need to be very big. So I'm going to finish this one up and then just add a little bit of color down below so it isn't quite so stark white and it matches kind of the glow of the rest of the panel. And then I will set this one aside. And the next piece I'm going to bring in is using the Bayou Backdrops. I'm actually going to turn it upside down because I want it to look like all of these wild grasses are kind of poking through the snow and they are frozen and frosty. So that's why I'm still using my Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and just pouncing it on so that I don't bend those delicate little die cuts with the different uh, vines. So I was going to only do the grasses and then leave the frame white, but I changed my mind and decided that I wanted that to have a little bit of a frosty glow as well. So I'm just coming in lightly and adding a bit more of that salvage patina all around. I'm not doing it too perfectly because like I said, I just wanted it to look frosty. So it's a little bit patchy here and there, but I did that intentionally. That's the look that I was going for. 
So I'll just pounce on a little extra color here and there, and then I'm going to move on to the next piece. And for that, I'm going to use one of the meadow borders. I'm using the one with the curve. And I'm going to, again, just be really careful at the tops of those grasses because it's real easy to bend them if you're too rough with your blending tool. And then I'll come down the sides and the bottom to add the frosty glow to this field of snow as well. So because this is kind of like a wild scene, if you've ever walked along like the waterfront in the wintertime, which we do because we live in a snowy lakeside area, um, you know, there's a lot of foliage and growth that kind of comes up and then gets frosty. And um, that's kind of the look that I'm going for. I also did cut the little lake out of the bayou backdrops from some mermaid cardstock and I'm adding some salvage patina to the edges of that as well just to make the edges stand out a bit and then I am ready to start assembling the little scene here so I'm going to start with the sky I'm going to glue that to a peacock card base using the glue tube just make sure that it is on there nice and straight. And then the next piece I'm going to use is the meadow border. So that's going to overlap that sky so that you just see a little bit of it on the horizon. And then I'll take the pond and I'm gonna add that right below the grasses and just kind of put a little bit of space in between so you can see the bank on the other side of the pond. And then I've added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the Bayou Backdrops frame. I've cut down some really thin strips so that it will be very well supported, but just give me a little bit of lift. And I even put a couple little teeny pieces behind those vines so they would be well supported too. So next I wanted to work on my sentiment and I'm going to heat emboss that onto a piece of barn red cardstock. So I'm going to prep that first with my Rabbit Hole Designs powder tool and then I'm going to stamp using Versamark ink. It's just a clear sticky ink that works great for embossing and I'm just using my Misty to make sure that I can stamp that down twice and just press down gently on that stamp so that it's going to be nice and bold. Then I'll coat that with some white embossing powder, tap off any excess from the back and then I will heat my heat gun off to the side for about 30 seconds and then bring it to the cardstock. I like to heat it from the back first and then bring it to the front and just set that until it's nice and white and shiny. And then I'm going to work on the inside of my card. So I'm going to stamp in Rainforest ink because it's just a bit darker than the Peacock. And I'm using Peacock cardstock, so I wanted this to really show up. And I chose another beaver from the set, plus the little log that is kind of chewed down and the Happy Heart Day sentiment. And now I can bring in my images and start to stage this little scene that I've envisioned. And I'm going to begin with the log. So I'm going to adhere that down just below the pond. And I'm tucking it under those vines or grasses so that they overlap it a bit and you're kind of almost peering through the brush at this little scene in the forest. And then I'm going to take that little heart garland and string that across the log and it actually is the perfect fit, almost as if they intended it that way. <laughs> uh, it works great there on that. So then I'm going to take my little beavers and adhere those so that they're sitting on top. So just add them into place. So cute. I just adore this set. I think they're so darling. So then I just have a few accessory images that I'm going to use to kind of continue the scene and um, kind of just incorporate all the stamped images a bit more. So we're going to have some cattails poking out of the snow on the opposite shoreline there. So I'm just tucking them under the edge of the pond. And then I also have the two grasses. So I'm going to put one on each side as well because I like my cards to be balanced a lot of the time. I just really like symmetry. So if I have something on the left, I usually have something to balance it out on the right. That's just my personal preference. 
And then I have the little trio of hearts. The die actually cuts out two of the hearts together and one separate, so you can use that however you want it. But I'm going to just put them right above there, um, kind of filling up the space in between the cattails. And then I have the little bow that I'm going to add to the beaver on the right. Then I'll grab my sentiment strip and I selectively trimmed that down with the everyday sentiment banners. So I just kind of adjusted it to make it a bit shorter so it would fit the phrase. And I'm going to glue that down right above the frame below the little log. And of course I had to add a bit of shimmer to finish off this card. So I'm going to take my favorite stardust stickles and add that to the large heart. You could also stamp another phrase there. They have some different phrases that fit perfectly inside that heart, but I knew that I was going to want some glitter there, so I left it nice and plain for today. I'm also going to add some glitter to the hearts in the garland and the little trio. And that is going to finish up this card. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and how that stickles looks as it catches the light. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and click that like button or leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for watching and spending your day with me. If you're watching this on the day it goes live, Merry Christmas. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.